Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today we're going to be talking about AMD's roadmap, the B550 chipset, and just what the heck is going on. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the new B550 chipset, what it means for us as low-spec gamers, all that kind of stuff see where it makes sense and see if actually AMD has started to tighten the thumb screws on our beloved AM4 platform. Now most of us are aware of the AM4 platform which started out with the original Ryzen first generation and we were kind of promised uh, some longevity out of this platform. And as time's gone on it's actually been very good, the B450 chipset etc has been absolutely fantastic but now we're getting to the new announced B550 chipset and this is where things have started to go a little bit wrong. It was slightly noticeable with the X570 chipset, but the B550 is the one that actually really starts to break the mold from AMD, and actually it's almost made it become a bit of an Intel. So let's take a look at the AMD website, and we'll talk about what I mean. Okay, so this is the uh, AMD website. Now today is the 7th of May, 2020, and today is the launch date of the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X. So these are the new AMD processors, and it kind of struck me as a little bit odd. Why are they releasing them now? They're at a very, very similar price point to other processors, which are pretty much better, such as the Ryzen 5 1600AF, which is an absolutely sweet processor. They're virtually the same price, so why do we need it in the product lineup? Now, I know technology moves on, and we've got new generations, etc., but do we really need AMD to be competing with itself on these processors? And actually today, after looking at the B550 chipset, it's actually starting to fall into line. I understand entirely why these new processors are out and why they are so critical for AMD's success going forward with the B550 chipset. So let's go back to the uh, website. So this is the introduction for the AMD B550. So it enables PCI Express 4 for everyone, which is uh, great. If you need faster drives, all that kind of stuff. But one thing I really did notice straight away was the logo on the screen there. So you've got quite clearly third gen AMD Ryzen desktop ready, which is fantastic. That's what we want to see. But in the kind of the smallish print underneath, it says not compatible with AMD Ryzen 5 3400G and AMD Ryzen 3 3200G. Now these are technically second gen parts. The naming convention is very confusing. But you'd think that the B550 chipset is the absolute perfect combination to be used with those particular APUs, being that they're built-in graphics, so keeping the cost down for system integrators or for light gaming purposes, the B550 chipset with its enhancements and those particular processors will be absolutely perfect. And the B450 chipset with those particular processors is absolutely amazing, it gives you so much performance for your money. So why would they remove them from the product stack? on the B550 chipset? Very good question. Obviously there's a technical reason behind it, um, which I'm not in a position to tell you what it is. Hopefully someone else will chip in in the comment section and let us all know what is going on. By seeing that immediately, it's kind of opened up the window to why those two new processors have been released today, the 3100 and the 3300G, because without them, the B550 is pretty much dead on arrival. Now, for most people buying a third generation processor, or 3000 series processor from AMD, you'd be looking at the Ryzen 5 3600 as the kind of the entry level, which still is around about the kind of £150 mark here in the UK, so around about $160, $170 in the US, which is still an awful lot of money for a kind of a budget, almost entry level chipset. So that is why they need those processors out, and also at that kind of similar price point to those other processors we mentioned, the Ryzen 5 1600AF, even the Ryzen 5 2600, and also these APUs. So it makes complete sense why they've been released. We didn't really need them on the market. It's a really nice, refreshing thing to see them on the market, but we didn't really need them because we had chips which would suit the bill already. But because of the limitations of the B550 chipset and also the X570 chipset, this is why they've come out. Because otherwise, there's nothing to put on the motherboard, especially if you're buying a budget system, which then people would probably look at the newer Intel chips. So let's have a look at the motherboard chipset solutions listing here for the Socket AM4. 
and see where we've started to lose some compatibility and also some things that don't actually make any sense. So if we start at the bottom, the A320 chipset, which is the bang for the buck, budget, entry level motherboard, most system integrators tend to use these to save money wherever they can because generally you can put pretty much any processor on there and with sufficient cooling they generally run okay. But as we can see, the A320 on this far side, so if you're looking to use it for a first gen, no problem. First gen with Radeon graphics, no problem. Second gen AMD, compatible, and also second gen with Radeon graphics, again, compatible. But this is where we start to get into a kind of a weird area. So third gen AMD Ryzen processors, here it says, there's a big X on it. So basically meaning it's not supported or it isn't suitable. So immediately when I looked at that, I thought, well, hang on, because the A320, the M-K from ASUS, fantastic little board, which I reviewed a while back, which you can check out up here. But I thought, I'm sure I saw that in the BOSS revision, that it did actually support the third gen or 3000 series processors. So let's take a quick look on the ASUS website, and lo and behold, here it is, Prime A320 M-K, again, A320 chipset. And scrolling down through the list, we've got quite clearly, Ryzen 3 3100, and underneath that, Ryzen 3 3300X, both of which are compatible with that board with BIOS revision 5007. So completely going against what AMD have said. So this is really confusing. So we don't really know if it's gonna be an issue with certain boards going forward. Like it says above, selective beta BIOS update is needed for the B350 and also the X370 boards. And same actually example for the X370. So the Prime X370 Pro. So let's take a look at CPU and memory support. And if we scroll down through, so we've got the older A series chips there as we'd expect. But again, we've got Ryzen 3 3100 listed and the Ryzen 3 3300X listed. So that isn't gonna be a problem on BIOS version 5008. So we shouldn't have any problems at all. But another thing which is weird is it's not technically supposed to support some of the newer Ryzen chips like the 9 series. But again, those are all listed there and should work absolutely no problem at all. So it's, it's a really, really confusing mess at the moment. And as you can see from the uh, chipset solutions kind of mock up on the screen here, the compatibility that we kind of we expect or we appreciated at the beginning, where pretty much every processor worked on all the platforms. Now we seem to be getting a lot of these crosses coming in. So if you're using a, a B450 chipset, you are pretty much in a moment now at the end of life for that chipset. Now it is compatible with the third generation AMD Ryzen processors, so that is up to it currently, the 3950X. But future AMD processors with Zen 3 architecture, so that's the 4000 series, just to make things confusing, um, as it says at the moment, is not gonna be compatible. So if you're on any other chipset than the X570 or the B550, the 4000 series are not gonna be compatible with your motherboard. Now again, this can be worked around, I would imagine, very similar to how they have done with the A320, where technically the third gen Ryzen processors are not compatible, but as we've seen, they are, and they're listed as being compatible. So you would assume that ASUS being the upper tier company that they are would have tested these processors before they actually put the listings out. But yeah, it's a, it's a very confusing time. So essentially going forward, if you're looking at a 3000 series processor or a 4000 series processor, then really you should be looking B550 or X570. If you're kind of in the middle ground or you're a system reseller, you can probably pick up some really good bargains now in the coming days and weeks for the uh, X470 and the B450 chipsets. The B450 chipsets, there's quite a lot of stock on the market, so I would imagine to see some massive decreases in price with that. We have been told that the B550 chipsets boards are gonna be looking roughly the same price as the B450s are currently now. So again, the B450s, because they are effectively gonna be end of life, we would expect to see some pretty decent discount. So moving forward, if you're going with a 2000 series or 3000 series processor and a B450 motherboard, it's gonna be absolutely great, but you are gonna struggle when the 4000 series comes out because again, we don't know what's gonna happen. There may be some kind of fudge support, but at the moment it doesn't look like there's gonna be. So it's a, it's a very odd time. There's gonna be a lot of complexity and I can imagine the comment section being absolutely crazy 
it's pretty bad at the moment with people saying, is the 3000 series processor compatible with XYZ motherboard? I get it all day long and it actually, a lot of the times it confuses me. I'm not entirely sure every processor is gonna work. So I end up going to the motherboard manufacturer site, checking their BIOS updates and seeing what is available, which is one thing I would strongly suggest you do. If you are considering any of these motherboards, based A320 right the way through to X570, and you've got a particular processor in mind, do yourself a favor, go to the manufacturer's website, check their latest BIOS revision, check the CPU compatibility, and see what is actually listed as being compatible with your board. It may not always reflect what AMD has put out in the mainstream media. So that pretty much wraps things up. Um, again, it's a little bit of a rant, so I do apologize for going on but it just seems really confusing. I didn't really know why these new processors have come out. I know it's a new line for AMD to kind of push, but now it makes complete sense being that there is not gonna be the backwards compatibility that we're used to with the B550 chipset. And essentially, if you're gonna be buying a B550 on launch day and you're planning on using it with an older Ryzen processor, it ain't gonna happen. You are gonna to have to have a latest and greatest or at least a current generation processor to enable it to work out of the box. So as per usual, if you've got any comments or questions, please do feel free to put them in the comments section below. Um, if you're a little bit pissed off about AMD doing this and kind of removing the seemingly backwards compatibility on the B550 chipset, sound off in the comments. I really want to hear it. And uh, hopefully if we make enough noise, maybe, you never know, somebody might introduce a way of enabling those processors to work. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.